Now, I know we've mentioned the term partitioning a few times in our previous lessons. And first, I just want to talk about the overall concept of what a partition is and what it will serve for us when using the Linux operating system. Basically, it's going to allow us to divide physical disks into logical sections that can be used for various purposes. The same reason that you would put folders inside of a filing cabinet, because just throwing all of those files into the filing cabinet might not be the most organized way to access that information. The same is going to be the case for the Linux file systems and the way that we organize our information. So we'll create these partitions, essentially the same thing as a folder in a filing cabinet, to organize our information in a logical manner. Now we have to partition our disks during Linux installation. And we're actually going to create file systems on these partitions, which are basically grooming the partition so that it will accept information. And you can choose to have the installation automatically format and partition your information for you, or you can actually do it manually if you have some specific needs for your file systems or partitions. Now, this definitely is going to require some available space on your disk, but again, you'll have those options available to you during the installation. It'll basically say, do you want to keep what you have, delete it, upgrade it, etc. So you'll have plenty of options to manipulate the space on your physical drive. Now, always remember that when you partition and actually change the partition structure or create a file system, you're going to destroy everything on that part of the hard drive. So definitely be careful not to blow away any of your existing data. Now, no matter how many partitions you have on your system, they all come back to root. And root is a term to describe the top of the tree. See, Linux uses a file system much like a hierarchy. So if you can imagine a tree or a triangle starting at the very top is going to be the root. I know that sounds backwards, but that's actually the way it works. And then it's going to go down from there and get larger and deeper as it goes. So any other partitions that are created are definitely going to be under root. So the root partition or the beginning of the Linux installation is going to be denoted by a forward slash. And we'll get more into that in our future movies. So a couple of the basic partitions that you will definitely have in your Linux environment, we're going to start with the boot. The boot partition will basically contain files that are required to crank up the operating system and get it running in a usable manner. And based on some restrictions out there, we're generally going to keep this a fairly small size. For the most part, 32 megabyte is plenty of room. Your boot files might only take up a few meg. So we definitely want to keep that under 500 megabyte to save space and make sure we don't run into any complications later in the game. We'll have a home partition as well. Our home partition is going to be used to store personal files. It's very much like the Documents and Settings directory for the Microsoft Windows operating system. The swap partition actually has its own specific file system that is used for something called the swap file, which is comparable to the page file or the virtual memory used by Microsoft Windows. It allows us to trick the operating system into thinking we have more physical RAM than we really do. Most of the very common and popular distributions in today's environment will automatically partition your drive for you. Once you get into the more advanced and difficult to use distributions, you might run into some situations where you're required to use specific partitioning tools and have to do them manually. Now depending on which distribution you end up with, you might end up with one or more partitioning tools we're going to cover the three primary tools that are used in the popular distributions. Now, if you've spent any time inside of DOS or the older Windows environment, you're probably familiar with FDisk. This is definitely not the same FDisk that you might be used to. It has lots of available commands 
and is fairly complex when setting up your partitions and file systems. Now Disk Druid is actually a little bit more friendly. And Disk Druid is definitely the primary use for the Red Hat distribution. We'll also talk a little bit about CF Disk. CF Disk is pretty much favored by the Debian distributions. Now, as I mentioned before, F Disk is definitely pretty popular, but it's slightly more difficult to use. And we pretty much are going to reserve the F Disk for more advanced users and people that have specific and more complex requirements for partitions and file systems. Now, the Disk Druid is pretty handy because it's used in a graphical environment, allowing you to point and click your way through the format and partition of your Linux installation. And finally, CF Disk is primarily used for your manual partitioning if you choose not to let Debian automatically create that for you during the installation. And it's a little bit easier to use, I would say, than F Disk, but it's definitely not as easy to use as Distruid.